Lovely, thank you. <laughs> welcome to the First Baptist Church, those who are familiar and those who are not. We're welcome all people who choose to come here.
sort of reminded me that um, we had done our own music uh, otherwise uh, at our ceremony. Oh, we did it for our wedding. Uh, not too nervous. I was nervous as I was at the wedding. only 19 years ago after she uh, finally convinced me that maybe it was time to do it. And this song is very fitting for uh, that particular thing. And it was really great that uh, with Rebecca's piece this morning, there were pieces of Canada and Lee in it. So uh, here comes. loneliness, it's hard to imagine what life could be like when we're healed and our hopes are realized. But in the waiting, if we surrender our greatest desires to God and experience God purifying those desires so that the relationship with God comes first, 
then God delights in giving us what our heart's desire is. God does make everything beautiful in his time. There's a special word for in his time in the Bible. It's called kairos. It's the moments when the kingdom of God break into this world and bring shalom. That's wholeness and peace within ourselves and within our relationships. And this is what happens today in the encounter between Jesus and the man who has leprosy. So if you'd like to follow along, it's Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, 10 leopards, lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. We see here the story starts with a plea for mercy. Jesus was walking in the region where Galilee meets Samaria. We were looking at that on our story um, rug downstairs in Sunday school. And Jesus approached close to a group of lepers. There were 10 in this, in this group. And leprosy at this time could mean that they had parts of their skin that were not there anymore, or it could be any kind of skin disease. But they were kept far away from the other people who had healthy skin because they were afraid that it would spread to other people. So they had to live apart from their families, and they lived in colonies with other people who had leprosy. And even though Jews and Samaritans didn't usually talk to each other, in a leper colony, their leprosy brought them together, and those distinctions fell away. And as the story unfolds, we find that there's at least one Samaritan in this group. So the 10 men together came near enough for Jesus to hear their cry. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. They knew his name and they knew he had power and authority. They called him master. Maybe they had heard about him healing other people even people who had leprosy. Back in Luke chapter 5, verses 12 to 15, we read a story about a man who was covered in leprosy, who fell on his face before Jesus and said, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him and said, I do choose, be made clean. And then he told the man to go and show himself to the priests so he could then be restored to community and he wouldn't have to live with the leper colony anymore. And even though Jesus had asked the leper not to tell anyone else, the word had gotten out and people watched for Jesus to come by so that they would have a chance to get healed too. Now they couldn't come super close or they'd be breaking the rules, the law of the Old Testament. So because they were far away and they wanted to be heard, all 10 of them cried with one voice, like one, two, three, go guys. And they all said it together. Jesus, master, have mercy upon us. They were appealing to his compassion and they were hoping that Jesus would be moved to act, that Jesus had love in his heart for them and that he would help them to relieve their suffering. And they were willing to ask loudly. That tells me that this was really important to them. They weren't ashamed of their need for help. Have you ever been 
Ask to show mercy to someone that you don't know very well. When I was thinking about this, I remembered a trip that Matthew and I took when we were back in our 20s to New York City. And it was winter time, and we were walking along Central Park, and it was getting dark. And a, and a homeless man came up to us, and he asked if we had anything to give him, if we had any mercy for him. So we had a choice to make, didn't we? We could have kept on walking and pretended that we didn't see him, treat him like he's invisible, like we didn't hear his request, or we could pretend like we didn't have anything to give him, or we could give him what we had. We didn't have much, but Matt pulled a $5 bill out of his wallet, and you might have thought we gave him $100 for how happy he was. I can't remember his exact words, but it seemed like he was an angel because he started like pronouncing this blessing on us and said something like, I, I believe your love will be strong for many years. And I felt like we received more from the exchange than he did. And I was really glad we hadn't treated him like he was invisible. That's the way Jesus is. He sees people. He saw the lepers. He didn't treat them like they were invisible or pretend he couldn't hear them crying out. He turned to face them, and he took a good look at them. I wonder how those men felt with Jesus gazing at them. Maybe hopeful, maybe a little embarrassed about the way they looked with their skin conditions. Maybe they were anticipating, what's he going to do? Would he come over and touch them like he did for the other leper? Would he heal all of them? Jesus sees you. No matter what you think about yourself, no matter what you look like, what you're struggling with, even if other people have treated you like you're invisible. One of the very first names given to God in the scripture is from Genesis chapter 16, 13. And it's a surprising person who gave it to him. She said, you are El Roy, the God who sees me. And this is Hagar, who is the servant of Sarah. She was expecting a baby and Sarah felt threatened by that. So she, she treated her badly, and Hagar ran out into the desert, and she was giving up on life. And God came through an angel and spoke to her, and she knew that God saw her. He said, don't give up. Go back. This baby is going to have a great nation come from him, and I care about you. And just like Hagar, God sees us and is ready to move and act on our behalf. So what did Jesus do? He didn't reach out and touch them like he had done before, but he said, go and show yourselves to the priests. Didn't he, didn't he miss something? What about the healing that comes first? He's out of order. But maybe it was Jesus inviting them to move forward in faith that they would be healed. They had a choice to make. Should they start walking towards the priests with the leprosy still all over them? Should they say, hey, can you, can you say something first? Can you heal us first so we know that this is going to be a trip worthwhile? But all 10 of the men chose to step out in faith and follow Jesus' instructions. They wouldn't be allowed in the city if they got there with the leprosy. But verse 13 tells us, as they went, they were made clean. Stepping out in faith. Have you ever been asked to do that? To start moving towards something before you can see the results? God's healing in our lives, it comes in different ways, and it doesn't follow a formula. It doesn't always follow the pattern you might be expecting. But sometimes we're invited to, in, to participate in our healing, just like the men were. 
So what would it look like for you at this moment to step out in faith that God would heal something in your life? And when God does heal you and fulfill your greatest hope, what will you do next? Will you keep it quiet? Or will you have something to say? One of the men had something to say. He was praising God and giving thanks. Verse 15 says, one of the men, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He wasn't shy about asking, and he wasn't shy about praising, because he was overwhelmed with the grace that God had poured into his life. He could have kept going. He would have been following God's instructions, just like the other guys. But he wanted to thank Jesus first. I think it was spontaneous and a joyful response. And he wanted to give God the glory and not put the emphasis on what he did walking towards the city and say, that's why I got healed. I think he showed humility. He's the one, when he came back, he fell down at Jesus' feet. He was kneeling there in front of him. And that's the place we've seen many people end up, right? It's the place of a disciple, a learner, someone who wants to be following Jesus in relationship with him. Now, once he was healed, he could have gone back to having prejudice against Jewish people. Oh, now I'm healed, all that's behind me. And Jesus was a Jew. Maybe he would pick up an old resentment. But yet, here he was the only one to turn around and say thank you. Like the Good Samaritan, sometimes it's the person we would least expect, the outsider. Jesus called him the foreigner, who is sensitive to the heart of God. I think he was used to being treated with disrespect by other Jews, yet he didn't let it harden his heart. And so he let his circumstances lead him into humility, and that made him ready, because the humble ones are the ones who are close to the heart of God. What about the other nine guys? Someone made a funny cartoon of what they might have been thinking. We really don't know, but in this one it says, the first guy says, sure, my leprosy is healed, but I'm still ugly. And the second one says, well, what I really need is a new coat. Or, hey, I could do with a lift back to town. And this guy says, now I've got the hiccups. This kind of shows us how ungrateful we can be. We might not be as obviously un ungrateful as the guys in the cartoon, but how quickly do we move on to the next thing we want from God when God's given us something huge? The proper response to grace is thanking God, to just savor that moment and realize how big it is. And we, when we do that, we're turning towards relationship with God, not just God's healing and God's protection and all the benefits that God can give us. Do you see the difference? How can we express our gratitude and bless God's heart like he's blessed ours? We can do it by talking to God in prayer, and that can be out loud or in our hearts. But I encourage you to consider the example of the man who was healed from leprosy and was willing to shout it out in public and tell other people what God has done for you. I came across this quote this week, and I wasn't sure who it was from, but then I found it was actually from one of my favorite authors, Ann Voskamp. We only enter into the full life if our faith gives thanks. She goes on to say, because how else do we accept his free gift of salvation if not with thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is the evidence of our acceptance of whatever he gives, not being demanding. Thanksgiving is the manifestation of our yes to his grace. 
And it was grace that God offered each of these men in response to their request for mercy. And the one who returned to give thanks for his healing received the fullness of this gift of grace. I wanted just to pause for a moment and do what I'm asking you to do. Give God glory for healing in my life. I think some of you know I kept, I kept a journal reading through Luke, and it was three years ago. And so I was reading my prayer that I wrote at the end of, of this passage, and it was pleading with God for mercy to heal me from my headaches and to be willing to participate with God in any way that he was asking me to do. And now I give thanks. God invited me to participate and my doctor to participate into that healing road, but now I don't have migraine headaches every day like I used to. I hardly ever have them at all. Praise God. My relationship with God was deepened both by my experience of having chronic migraines and by my healing. And I wonder if the same was true for the man who gave thanks in our story from being healed with leprosy. Was he already drawing close to the heart of God in his condition that humbled him and made him aware of his need? Jesus had a word for him. Verse 19 says, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. And this is not just physically well, because the Greek word is sozo. It can be translated, has saved you. It means salvation and healing. It's the same word. And it means to save a suffering one from perishing. Yes, he was suffering physically from his leprosy, and he was also suffering emotionally from the distance from everyone, and he was suffering spiritually. Maybe he was wondering about how much God loved him. And this was bringing a healing to all of it. It was true and full salvation. And not only was he healed for this life, but he was healed for the one to come. Because even though he was healed from leprosy, he eventually died. But he was ready when he died to go to the place of complete and utter healing, which is heaven, which has the last word for anyone who believes in Christ. We don't always know if it's God's will to heal us on this side of eternity, but we can trust that full healing awaits every single one of us who has faith in Jesus and for his love for us. We can call out for mercy with confidence that God is happy to give us what it is we need most. I came across another quote. It was by Thomas Merton, who's a contemplative Christian who spent a lot of time meditating about who God is and spending time with God in meditation. One of his last things he wrote was, God is mercy within mercy within mercy. It runs deep. It echoes the psalmist in Psalm 69, 6, who cried out, Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Are you willing to cry out to God like the psalmist, like the person who had leprosy, to ask God to show you mercy? If God has already worked healing grace in your life, are you willing to give thanks with your voice like the Samaritan did? In a moment, we'll be singing together, and then you'll have some space of time to lift up your voice, either in a prayer of healing, asking God for mercy, or in a praise for healing that God's already accomplished in your life. If you want, you can come forward, and I'll anoint you with oil in, in partnership with you as you pray, but you are welcome to also just lift your voice up right there from your seat. 
but Jeff will lead us in the music and we'll have a space to meditate and pray and share and lift up our voices and then we'll all sing the benediction to God this time. It's gonna be thank you, Lord. We'll start with in the Lord I'll be ever thankful. It's on the screen and it's on an insert in your bulletin. <laughs> 